Hi, I'm Dana and welcome to another episode of Learning to be Autistic. This series has come about because I got my late autism diagnosis at the age of 21 and realised that I had no idea who I was as a person or how I fit into the world or anything. I just really need to figure myself out a lot and this series is trying to help me do that while also trying to help out other autistic people while also trying to like spread some awareness of what autism is to neurotypicals and people of other neurodivergencies and I'm just trying to be somewhat helpful, okay? <laughs> if this series sounds like your kind of thing, I'll link... Is it this side? I'll link episode one somewhere up here. There's a playlist, it'll all be linked, you'll see it all somewhere. But I want to get into today's video, because today I want to have just a little candid chat about autistic burnout. For anyone who doesn't know what it is, it's the website that I've done my research on today describes it as extreme physical or mental or emotional exhaustion and I'd, I'd say that's pretty much right in my experience. It tends to be caused by just the strain that is put on autistic people trying to exist in neurotypical society. It tends to happen more so to those of us that are deemed high functioning which is not a thing that I like I'm gonna make a whole video about that at some point when I have the mental energy. But yeah, those of us who are more likely to be in jobs or going to school with other neurotypical people, those of us, those with lower support needs, tend to be more likely to burn out. But it can happen to any autistic person, although it doesn't happen to every autistic person because that's always, we're all different people. I wanna make this video now because I feel like I'm very much again on the precipice of autistic burnout, if that's even the word, I don't know. I think I've been running on empty without fully realizing it for probably solidly the last year and a half. And the last, probably about three months, it's really started to catch up with me. You know, I wouldn't quite say I'm burnt out yet. I'm doing everything I can to stave it off. But I'm definitely reaching a point where I can feel it and it's really unpleasant. Like at the minute, I'm still having some good days, but I'm also having some bad days, the types of which I've not had in a really long time. And for me, a lot of autistic burnout is sort of just completely shutting down. And not in the way of like shutdowns that we have when it's a stressful situation or whatever, in the way of I will just spend an entire day feeling entirely just empty and numb and I just don't feel any sort of emotion of any type. There's just nothing inside of me, there's nothing there. For me, it's very much a case of everything's piled on top and piled on top and I'm so exhausted and I'm so tired and it, it only takes one more thing for me to just be like I can't take anymore everything's too overwhelming and it's like my brain just shuts itself off and it's just like okay we can't take any more in so we're not going to there's nothing left for you to take in nothing's going to spark joy or interest or disgust or any sort of reaction there's just nothing there you know, and feeling that emotionally very much gives a physical feeling to it as well. I feel heavy, like all of my limbs from like my toes to my fingers. It just feels like so much effort to get up and to move and to do anything. So I don't want to shower. I don't want to make food. I don't want to get out of bed. If I've gotten out of bed, I don't want to move to get back into it, you know? And it doesn't matter how much sleep I get, I'm still really, really tired. But like I say, at the minute I'm doing everything I can to stave it off. So it is, it, it's a day of that, followed by three okay days, and then a worse day, and then a bad day, and then a few more good days. And you know, this is something that a lot of autistic people experience. You don't even have to be an adult to have experienced it. Kids get this, teenagers experience this. And yet it's still something that's incredibly under-researched. And it does feel a bit like, so y'all want to take our DNA to like, pretend to try to cure epilepsy and autistic people but no one's prepared to put a study into why so many autistic people feel completely burnt out and unable to do anything really okay the main thing helping me to stay with up at this point is just keeping a routine and doing what i can on the good days and trying to let myself off on the bad days and just sort of not quite wallow in it but just sort of accept like this is how i feel right now so i'm just gonna watch doctor who and I'm not going to feel the same joy that I normally do from watching Doctor Who. 
but it's better than not watching Doctor Who, you know? Avoiding situations that are particularly stressful or overwhelming or sensorily unkind is also really helpful. I really help. It's really helpful. Like, I'm not saying avoidance is the way to go about things, but sometimes when you're really not feeling it, you do gotta just, just avoid it. <laughs> this experience of burnout though, because I have like skills to try and stave it off and try to make it better, I'm not perfect at that. I definitely need to figure out how to do like autistic self-care because having a shower, washing my hair and waxing my legs isn't gonna help me any. It's gonna make me more burnt out. I need to figure out some like autistic self-care. But the reason that I have like the vague skills that I have and the vague coping mechanisms that I currently have is because my last burnout was fucking horrible. <laughs> I know this isn't like a funny video, but can we get that clip of Superhands being like, fucking horrible, yeah. Um, I, I say that like I have an editor, I'm just telling myself to do it. But yeah, my, um, my first experience of autistic burnout was when I was 16 and it lasted until I was 21. So it's, it, it was the hardest time in my life. And that's what we're gonna go into now. So <laughs> stick around for this fun. Okay, so when I was 16, I left high school like we all do in the UK and I went to college. We'd moved from a really quite small town to a city. So I was going to college in a city and I thought it was gonna be a great fresh start. And as soon as I started, I realized it wasn't. Every single day from like the third day onwards, I was just so tired. Like it was such a big college in such a big city to me. And for the first time in my life, I had a actual like commute on public transport instead of just walking. And you know, I did okay. For the, at first, I did okay at first. You know, I made a couple of friends, I was going out to places and like socializing with people. And to any outsider, it would have looked like I was settling in really well. But it was exhausting. Like I would get home and just sort of sit there and stare at the wall. Cause I'd, I'd been exhausted from high school. High school really tired me out. I'd basically experienced the same thing there. But this time it was just so much worse. And I started to think like, how the hell am I meant to do this for two years? I'd also met my boyfriend when I was 16 and we got very, very close very quickly. So I was seeing him like almost daily and most evenings after college and stuff. That was sort of recoup time because I could be myself around him. For It was the first person I could just be myself around. And that was what really made me realise how exhausted I was. Cause it was like, I so wanted to like go on this date and go out to this place and like hang out and do this. And almost every time we ended up just staying at mine and watching movies, cause I just had nothing to run on to go out. And then me and my dad moved further away from the college. So my commute got longer and it got to a point where just that tired me out. Um, the city I live in, the train that I had to get basically would like come from my stop, go around the city, all the way up like past my stop and then back. That's what it did all day. And it got to a point where I'd get on the train in the morning with all of my stuff ready and I'd sit on the train and I'd sit on the train. And I'd be thinking like, God, what have I forgotten this? What have I done that? Oh, do you remember that conversation I had like two days ago with that girl? God, that was so embarrassing. Oh, that guy must think I'm like such a jerk from where I did that without even realising. And oh, this social like interaction that I had, that was awful. And next thing I knew, there's kids getting on the train in their school uniforms because school's over. It's like 4 p.m. I've, I've missed my full day of college. I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know where that time was going. I was sat there thinking, thinking like, oh, it's going to be my stop in a minute. I'll get off then. But for now, I'm going to have to think about this and this and this and this. And then suddenly, hours and hours and hours have gone. I've missed my whole day of college, you know, just sitting on this train. So eventually, after about six months of college, I said to my boyfriend one morning, like, I can't go in. I, I just can't do it. I don't have the energy in me to go to college today. And he's brilliant and lovely. So he was like, it's fine, you can go tomorrow. And we woke up the next morning and I was like, I can't do it. I absolutely, I cannot do it. I do not have it in me. Like I was in tears every morning for the next month, two months. I don't know, it's ages. Cause I wanted to go to college. I wanted to learn and see these people I'd made friends with. And I just could not do it. Like not only did every social interaction just completely exhaust me, well, overthinking the fucking social interaction also completely just exhausted me. And getting the train and all the noises and all the people was also overwhelming. And 
walking up to the college and seeing all these people that like I kind of know so do I smile at them do I nod at them do I say hi do I talk to them like I kind of know them I've seen them around so what do I do you know it was just so constantly overwhelming and exhausting and I just could not do it so I dropped out of college and my boyfriend had recently gotten a job he's a little bit older than me he'd gotten a job and he was like we can move out the uh the situation with the parent that I was living with wasn't the best at the time so I, I really needed an out from there so we moved into our first flat together and he went to work each day and I sat there <laughs> you know I, I didn't have the energy to shower I didn't have the energy to cook for myself I didn't have the energy to turn on the tv to actually like, do something like play a game or watch something I didn't have the energy to read any books like I usually did I just had nothing left to give at all so I just sort of sat there and because I was so like just sad and down and empty and numb and exhausted obviously everyone assumed it was depression so I went to the doctors and they put me on antidepressants and three months later when they hadn't helped they put me on different antidepressants and three months later when they hadn't helped and so on and so forth and none of them helped none of them did anything so I was like okay I'm gonna have to deal with this on my own because I'm 18 now and I need to do something with my life. I need to get an education. I need to get a job. I need to, you know, contribute to society and be a real person and function like an adult now that I am one. So I went back to college. It was exactly the same as last time, but all the worse because I'd convinced myself that this time I was a grown up and I knew what I was doing and everything was going to be a-okay this time. And then it wasn't, it was exactly the same as last time and I had much less tolerance for it and I still wasn't really out of my cystic burnout because it was a case of like, I'd get up in the morning surrounded by dirty washing all over my floor and dirty dishes in the sink and oh, there's no food in for me to have before I go because I haven't done the grocery shop and I don't really have the energy to eat anyway and I, I haven't showered and I don't really give a shit so I'm just going to douse myself with as much deodorant as I can so that no one else knows that I haven't showered. It was equally as exhausting but this time it was an incredibly disappointed exhaustion because I really thought it was going to be different and it just wasn't it, it just wasn't so the whole process of what happened the previous time sped up fun fact that I forgot is that my dad had passed away about three months before I started college so that was weighing on me and every now and again we'd have little things in college because obviously most of them were 16 when I went back to college and so the teacher would give you Give you a little piece of paper to write down your support system on and I'd be sat there thinking like oh I, I should be writing my dad on here but I can't because he's dead and then I'd have like part anxiety attack part meltdown because I was so anxious about crying in front of people that like my emotions got really overwhelmed and I'd just be sobbing with like snots and it was just a whole ordeal that made everything so much worse even though I will say Everyone was really sympathetic and kind, like no one made me feel bad for that. But I felt bad enough on my own, you know, they wouldn't have needed to. So I dropped out again after three months and it's still something that I find that I'm really ashamed of. You know, like my parents raised me to see like knowledge is power, you know, you need to learn and educate yourself and just learn as much as you can. And I want to, but I just can't do it in the environment that you're meant to do it in or I feel like you're supposed to do it in. And, you know, I understand, like, the importance of educating yourself and using the resources around you, and I do try to do that. But I always wanted qualifications, you know? Like, it's something that you're told to aspire for. It's what helps you get jobs. You know, and jumping out of college, again, only made me feel worse. So the burnout sort of increased, because I think that was when it did get a layer of actual depression, and maybe that's when antidepressants would have helped a little bit. But I was so over them by that point. Like, so many of them had made me feel worse than I had before. I just did not want to try it again. You know, I felt anxious and exhausted all the time. It was, it was a point where I was having a lot of suicidal thoughts, not because I was, like, sad or depressed. Well, I don't think I was depressed. I think it was pretty much entirely burnout. I'm not sure. But I just felt like, what's the point of being alive if this is what being alive is, you know? Like, I'm not sure that I ever would have followed through on it, but it was definitely a thought that I had a lot. And thankfully, it's not a thought that I've had in quite a long time. It's not one I want to have again. But it was it was on my mind a lot at that point. You know, like, I didn't really have any support system. I was so on my own with it all. 
I didn't know I was autistic yet, so all my boyfriend saw was, I've got this girlfriend that I go to work and have to pay for because she can't work because of her anxiety. She's dropped out of college and she can't even be asked to do the dishes. She can't even be bothered to have a shower or change her clothes. You know, it was a really tense time and I'm, I'm kind of shocked that he stuck with me to it, to be honest. But yeah, outside of my boyfriend who, you know, he was in work a lot, I didn't really have any sort of support system and I didn't put an awful lot of how I felt on him either because I didn't want to like overwhelm him and make him leave me. But the thing that got me out of that was completely changing my, like, my living situation my entire life. Not too dramatically because that would have sent me up the wall, but just enough that I had a support system. We moved house and you know, I, I got to spend like two weeks with my boyfriend making a house at home. That's always nice, that like nesting thing. Is that just for pregnant women? I felt like I was nesting for myself, okay? And, uh, and we also moved closer to my mum and brother, so I had more people around me. I felt a lot better. And then, not too long after I'd moved, I think it might have been like a year after I moved, my time, like, scale of time for events is very off, okay? I'm sorry, I wish I could be more precise. Anyway, I'd lived here, I, I think, about a year, I'm not too sure when I found out about a local business that sounded like it was just up my street and basically like asked them for a job, started working with them. And that was when I felt like I was really pulling myself out of it. You know, that was when like, I kind of started to even enjoy being alive. I felt like I was being productive. I felt like I was like, you know, putting something into something and getting something back. And I now realize that was being completely taken advantage of. And that's probably part of what's brought on this set of burnout. But at the time, I was so happy to have found it. I don't know if I'd say it increased my, my support system, but I had more people that I felt like I could talk to if I really needed to. And I never really did do it, but I felt like I could have, you know, and that, that means a lot to me, just feeling like I can talk to people often really helps, like, just as much as actually talking to them does sometimes. But as I say, I was I was very much being fucking taken advantage of there. I'd been working there for about a year when I again started to feel really burnt out. I was starting to like, luckily I was starting at this place at like 2 p.m. kind of thing was when I needed to show up. So it was fine that I was like sleeping in and staying up like stupidly late and just not really existing much as a person. And I felt like I was slowly declining into, into burnout for about six months. And then I got to go on holiday. And my, my childhood holidays growing up were camping in cold places, you know, like we're going to Snowdonia or Yorkshire. It was, it was camping in ice cold fucking places with my two brothers who just constantly fucking terrorised me and my parents. So I never saw holidays as like a relaxing time. But my partner's parents took us to Turkey for two weeks and it was a complete and total reset for me. I felt so damn good. You know, I, I get that it was just a holiday, but coming from both a working class background where I don't have that, and also a very anxious background where you need to be working or you're not a productive, sensible, normal, nice person, to have two weeks to just relax in a place that I don't really know, sit in the sun for the first time, like proper sun for the first time in my life, just go swim and eat crap and, and lay on the beach and read books. It was a complete mental reset for me and it helped immensely. Like I totally understand why people do like yearly holidays in the sun and stuff now. I completely get it and I want to be one of those people. Giving yourself, if you can, time to just relax in a nice place does fucking wonders and it's it's a real shame that more of us can't afford to do that more often. That was in 2019 and I do kind of wonder if it didn't just sort of put off what I'm experiencing now. But if it did, it put it off for two years, so I'm sure it's heck not whinging, you know? Like, nah, I wouldn't have been putting off that burnout, because otherwise I think it would have happened a lot sooner. I think it, it cancelled the burnout that I was experiencing at the time, and this has just come about as a new set of burnout. Woo! Burnout to an electric boogaloo. I don't have holiday money, or a desire particularly to travel long distances right now, so a holiday ain't in the works. And as much as I would love to, I'm not moving house anytime soon. So I don't really fully know what to do to actually like remove myself of this burnout. I know ways to keep staving it off and keep trying to push it away. Things like sticking with my routine really help. Things like making sure I'm going to bed and waking up at good times really help, you know? But I don't know how to get rid of it. I don't know how to stop having the regular bad days. 
because you know it's completely normal and natural to have an odd bad day but I'm having like two bad days a week every week and it sucks I don't want it so so if you've got any advice for me be much appreciated and also if I just stop uploading videos sometime soon you know why but um I'm, I'm hoping that doesn't happen because I do really enjoy making videos I just currently don't have like the mental and physical energy to do fashion videos that's why it's a lot more of these sit down ones quite frankly I don't often talk to people other than my boyfriend and my mum I don't like talking to people I feel like they're constantly like they don't care what I have to say so why am I just chatting at them whereas on a video you can just turn it off so I can just say and talk as much as my heart desires and I find it very helpful should I be using YouTube videos as therapy? Probably not. Is it kind of working? But I don't know how to stop feeling so tired and so exhausted. And you know, it, it's hard to put 100% into videos when I'm feeling like this. So that's why I'm going for the ones where the 100% that's required isn't a hundred thousand percent if you get what I mean, you know? Like I've got the physical and mental energy to make my notes and to do a video like this. I don't have the physical and mental energy to come up with a concept, find a load of outfits based on that concept, then try them on and take them off and style them and try to pose and not look awkward. I just, I want to, but I don't got it right now. But I'm hoping that maybe I'll have like some good creative ideas for videos I can do that are more sat down without just being about autism. Because I don't want my whole channel to just be autism, you know? There's a lot more than that to me as a person. I, I want my channel to reflect me as a person, I guess. I'm just rambling now, you've listened to a lot of rambles. If you've listened to all of this, I assume that you like the video. So it'd be really nice if you like actually gave it a like, maybe subscribed. I, it's up to you, but it'd be nice. You have made it all the way to the end now. Cause I've, I've said what I wanted to say in this, I think. I wanted it to be more of a chat than a video with a point really. So whoever you are, wherever you are, I really hope that you're having a good day or evening or week or afternoon or morning or I'm normally better at saying words at this part. I kind of had it down and now it's completely gone. But anyway, I'll fingers crossed see you in a couple of days.